I think we did the math. It was like 1,400 watts uh, at full power. And we just blew it. And we just blew it. And there you go. I'm glad I got that on, on camera. We just blew the breaker. This is on LP. So I guarantee you the refrigerator probably kicked on. And the fridge kicking on is what kicked us over. But was it on an LP the whole time? Uh, no, it was on auto. And as soon oh. as the electricity went off, it kicked over. Okay. So I'm going to go do that. And I'm also going to go shut the air compressor in the garage off. Because that might have been what uh, threw us over too. Oh, yes. Well, you guys pretty much saw me uh, working with the generator with you guys. And showing you um, what I did in there. Uh, I don't think it's perfect at, by any means. Uh, like I said, um, I got that because um, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to afford to get that own in going. Um, and I needed to be able to generate some power uh, if we needed a boondock in the winter. Um, it was more successful or more reliable in the wintertime, I think. Uh, I think it's getting too hot down there, and that's why it keeps cutting off, um, especially when I put big power loads on it, like the uh, Coleman AC, which isn't working, uh, by the way. Audrey, Stephen, and Bella, our nine-year-old Doberman. We moved into a 35-foot RV just in time for winter in Minnesota. We chucked out the kitchen table so Stephen could bring his sim racing passion along with us. And I sell online with eBay, Etsy, and more with a full office of inventory that needs to go before we can go. Now that it's summer, we are tackling the many projects Artemis the RV requires to become ready for travel. There's still a long way to go and we hope to not be stuck mooch docking through another sub-zero winter. Follow us while we continue to fix up Artemis, downsize the office, and share our experiences as we navigate the ups and downs of full-time RV living. Here's what I had. This was a 13 amp, 15, 1600 watt uh, power horse. This was my backup generator, by the way. Unfortunately, my main generator that I replaced last year isn't working. I was supposed to use a 4500 watt generator I bought last year. It's not an inverter generator, it's just a traditional generator. It overheats in the compartment in the RV, so it's not usable. Uh, so I was trying to use this for my AC, but it just doesn't make enough power. I did some e-research online, uh, and I think I might have found the best generator for an RV in boondocking. Okay, so I just had this running for a half an hour to break it in. I had filled it with oil, uh, but now... I'm going to go ahead and drain the oil that I just put in it and we're going to put fresh oil back in it so I can get all the metal shavings from the break-in cycle out of it. So to drain this, I'm actually just going to do the opposite of filling it or what I did to fill it, which is basically screw uh, this little plastic adapter that they gave me to fill it right into that hole. And I'm just going to tip the generator over sideways. It's already draining, you can see. I'm just going to tip this over sideways and away she goes right there. Once that's all drained, I'll uh, fill it back up and we can use it. Well, I don't know if you can really tell. It's kind of dirty in there, but there's a couple little metal specks in there. Before I get this fired up, I guess I should tell you a little bit about it. I just changed the oil again. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I got all the metal shavings out of it from startup. This is a Genmax uh, 3300i generator. My last generator, like I said, put out about 13 amps. This puts out 26 amps. So it's literally twice the power and exactly the same size, if not a little bit smaller of a cassette. Um, and it is pairable with the other generator as well. So I could parallel these for a combined uh, wattage of about 4,500 watts, which will give me all the power I need. Um, and if I'm lucky, I might even get this to fit in the uh, generator bay that the Onan came out of. So. Let's get this thing plugged up and plugged in and fired up and see how it runs. So about to fire it up. Um, it's pretty simple. There's nothing to do on the cap here. Uh, I just uh, pull this over to choke. And then what I like to do is just give it one slow pull at first. <laughs> Usually I do this two handed. And then the second pull. Oh, Usually it's probably warm enough. It doesn't need a choke. All right. Well, let's see how many pulls it gets. It takes. The very next one. Okay, good, good, good. So that wasn't bad. Very next pull it started. It says it's ready. Let's see how she runs. It's already running way smoother than 
the other one was. I just turned my generator to max fan on high. My generator. I just turned my AC on high, max fan. Still making plenty of voltage, 122 volts. All right, let's see how long it takes to get it cool in here. Hopefully not long. We've been running now for about uh, since nine o'clock in the morning and at six now. So six, seven, eight, nine hours, just about. I just uh, refilled it again. Went out and had to buy a, a bigger gas tank today. I think it starts pretty easy now. Gets running. Just take it right here. That'll last me for about two hours, two and a half hours. Hey, want to help us out? Subscribe to our channel. It's totally free and it would really bring us joy. Then click the bell notification so you know when we have a new video up. Thanks. Day. I'm pulling this out. Uh, I bought it when I bought the RV because the Onan that was in here had a broken stator and it was going to cost $2,500 to fix. I thought that I was going to be smarter than everybody else by buying one of these generators off Craigslist, uh, taking it all apart and wiring it up to fit in here. And during the wintertime I was. Um, this actually worked really well in both giving us electricity uh, and heating up the underside of the RV when we got into temperatures down to negative 30. Unfortunately, uh, it's a lot warmer now and this thing only runs uh, for about 15 or 20 minutes before it just overheats in here um, and it can't it can't do that so you can see this one's a 224 cc engine and it just makes too much heat for me to get out of here uh, I had installed two cooling fans under here you can see one you can see another smaller one there in the back um, and those fans um, just cannot push enough air in here for this big one so uh, the reason I bought that little cassette generator is because um, I think I can get it to fit in here. Um, and so in doing that, I'm going to be able to utilize hopefully uh, two smaller generators in place of this one big one and be able to control the heat in here a lot better. Because um, this thing just isn't made to be put in small spaces. Uh, and not only that, but this isn't an inverter generator. So under load, I had problems keeping 60 hertz, which is what I need to run for my battery backup systems in the house. If I don't have 60 hertz and the battery backups go off and they start running off battery, and uh, that doesn't help anybody. So today uh, we're gonna pull this thing out of here and we're gonna get it ready for uh, the new setup that I'm putting in here. And I'll talk about a little bit about what I'm doing. So first things first, let's get it unplugged. All right, first things first, I got the uh, weight of the generator here supported in this bay with this jack so that I could uh, undo. There's two of these 916 bolts on each side. All right, I don't think there's any fuel in there. <laughs> there's either no fuel in there or all of it. Let's find out together. And back here, uh, there's a 12 volt solenoid. So this is how I made all my power connections. You can see I got 12 volts coming from the bus here uh, because the old Onan did have a push start. Um, and so I was able to just capitalize on that and then run here and then, uh, both of these are fused. But we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this right here. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna disconnect these. Uh, and then I'm gonna come over here. And uh, I'm gonna take this ground bar off. I'm gonna disconnect this right here. And we're gonna get all that disconnected. Um, and then uh, we'll get the fuel dis disconnected and uh, we should be ready to unbolt that thing. Uh, I also have to disconnect the exhaust and figure out how I'm gonna do that. I don't know if I'm cutting it or what I'm doing quite yet. It's, there's a couple of bolts here, so I might be able to just unbolt it from the flange and separate it. Well, we'll try that. Okay, so I got these guys disconnected. Got the power for everything. Yeah, this ground bar off right here. Um, I got my fuel line off, All right, where is it? It's running off right here. So I got the fuel line off. So next step is I'm gonna get these loose. I'm gonna take that off. And I think I should be able to just separate this whole pipe that I made from the muffler itself and separate it. And I got one bolt here to take apart.
out with the old. Again, I think I was trying to be a little bit too ambitious with this project. It did, I did get it to fit in this space. You see, here's all my old wiring. Here's the wiring for the Onan. I just have it kind of taped up and out of the way. It's the solenoid that I have, the supplying battery power here. Here's my electrical box up here. Uh, and then here's my fuel line that I came in here. This is a 12 volt pump that I have that was running off of uh, the generator. So everything that I had in here, the fans and everything, was running off the front of this generator switch panel. So when I would flick these two switches, I would activate all these relays right here. Uh, and I was able to power both the fuel pump and then these fans to keep this generator running off the fuel coming from the gas tank. Um, so I'd like to be able to do is, I know that I'm not going to be able to set up uh, the new generator the same way, just because it's kind of an enclosed unit and I'm not taking it apart like that again. Um, but what I will do is keep this back here for a filling station so that I don't have to try and keep lowering these things down every time I want to fill them. So, got it all apart. On to different ideas.